from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Imagine, nonprofit. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're on the waterfront in Seattle. It's an absolutely gorgeous couple of days here at the AWS Imagine um, nonprofit conference. We went to the AWS Imagine Education Conference. This is really all about nonprofits and we're hearing all kinds of interesting stories about how these people are using AWS to help conquer really big problems. And we're going to shift gears a little bit from the two-footed problems to the four-footed problems, and that's animals, and everybody likes animals, but nobody likes animal shelters, and nobody likes the ultimate solution that many animal shelters used to use to take care of problems. But thank you to our next guest, that is not quite the case so much anymore. So we're really happy to have Angie Embre on. She is the CIO of Best Friends Animal Society. Angie, great to see you. It's great to see you as well, and thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. So <laughs> before we got on, I just heard this crazy, crazy statistic that when your organization started in 1984, approximately 17 million animals were killed in U.S. shelters per year. That number is now down to 700,000. That is a giant, giant reduction, and yet you, with big audacious goals, really are looking to get that to zero. So, that's a giant goal. Give us a little bit of background uh, on the organization and how you uh, decided to go after a goal like that and some of the ways that you're actually going to achieve it. Well, um, the organization started in, in um, 1984 and it started with a group of friends in Southern Utah who decided that, um, you know, the, the killing in America's shelters just had to go. So really the Best Friends founders um, started the No Kill movement along with a gentleman in San Francisco by the name of Rich Evanzino. And as you said, they took, um, you know, the killing down from 17 million in 1984 to approximately 733,000 now. Um, the organization started as just the sanctuary. We have the largest no-kill companion animal sanctuary in the country where we hold about 1,700 animals every day. And we also have, um, you know, um, knowing that we needed to help out the rest of the country, we have built life-saving centers in Houston, Texas, or we're working on Houston, Texas, but right. Los Angeles, California, New York City, uh, Salt Lake City, um, Atlanta, Georgia. It seems like I've left somebody out, but uh, <laughs> we have life-saving okay. life centers all over the country. So it was really, um, you know, when they realized what was going on in America's shelters, you know, it was really the idea that we should not be killing animals for space. So um, just um, recently, in fact, I'll say recently, but in the last few years, Julie Castle, our C I CEO, um, you know, put, kind of the, did our moonshot, put that stake in the ground and said, we're going to take this country no kill by the year 2025. Right. So it's super exciting. So it's really interesting because you guys are trying to execute your vision it, and it's easy to execute your own vision, but it's a whole different thing when you're trying to execute your vision through this huge infrastructure of shelters that have been around forever. So I wonder if you can explain kind of what's your relationship um, with, with shelters that you don't own. I guess I think you said before we turn on the cameras they're affiliates. So how does that relationship work? How do you help them achieve your goal, which yeah, is no kill? So we have um, over 2,700 network partners around the country. And what we do is we help to educate them on, you know, we understand their problems. Um, we have creative programs to solve those problems. So we help to educate them on, you know, how they can implement these programs within their shelters. We provide them grant funding. Um, we have an annual conference every year where they can come and learn. Um, but they're really our partners and, and, you know, we know we can't do it alone. It's going to take us, it's going to take them, and it's, it's going to take everybody in, you know, in every community to really step up and help solve the problem. Right, and what was the biggest thing that changed in terms of, of, of kind of attitude, in terms of the way they have to operate the shelter? Because I think you said before that a lot of the killing was done to make room. Right, um, killing is done usually for space. So what do they do now? Clearly the space demands probably haven't change so what are they doing alternatively where before they would they would put the animal down well alternatively we're doing transport programs so there are areas in the country that actually have a demand for animals so instead of killing the animals we put them on a some tort 
sort of transport vehicle and we take them to the areas they're in demand. We also do what's called um, a trap neuter return program. So one of the biggest problems um, across the country are community cats. So those, a lot of people call them feral cats, right. but they're community cats and um, usually have a caretaker. But what we do is we trap those cats. Um, we take them into the shelter we neuter them and vaccinate them and then return them to their home. That keeps them from um, making um, a lot of other little cats. Right, making babies. So, um, yeah, so cats are one of the biggest problems in shelters today because of the community cats, they're feral cats and they're not adoptable. So if we can, we don't have to kill them. We can, you know, uh, we can keep them from reproducing, right. as I said, right. and then we can put them back in their habitat where they live a healthy, long, healthy life, right. happy life. So you said you've joined the organization about five years ago, five and a half years ago, and you're the CIO, first ever CIO. So I am. <laughs> um, what 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 brought you here? And and then now that you're here with a kind of a CIO hat, what is some of the new perspective that you can bring to the organization that didn't necessarily uh, that they had before from kind of a technical perspective? Well, um, what brought me here was I, I never expected to be here. Um, if you would have told me I would be the CIO at Best Friends Animal Society, you know, 10 years ago, I would have said you're kidding because I didn't really realize that there were professional positions in organizations like Best Friends. But I, you know, my journey begins the same as a lot began the same as a lot of people's did. I was that little kid always bringing home animals, <laughs> and you know my mother hated it. And you know it was always something showing up at our doorstep with me. You know, and um, just loved animals all my life. And as I, you know, went through college and and got my degree and started my professional career, you know, then I thought, well, I'm gonna you know, of course, have animals because I can have as many as I want now, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I started ado adopting and I didn't even realize until I was in my 30s that, that they were killing in shelters. And I learned that in Houston, Texas, when I lived there, I was working for IBM at the time. And uh, one day a lady came on the um, television and she said they were doing a new segment and she said, we're, you know, we're a no-kill shelter. And I thought, oh, my God, if there are no-kill shelters, then there are kill yeah, shelters, right? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, so to make a long story short then, um, I, I started um, not working in animal welfare, but sub doing more to support the movement and, um, you know, donating, adopting from shelters and fostering animals. And then one day... Um, I, I had been to Best Friends as a as a visitor vacationing in in this beautiful part of Utah, and but I saw the CEO or CIO, um, you position. know, position open. I said, I'm going for it. <laughs> Good for you. So, yeah. Good for you. So now you're there. So what are some of the things that you've implemented from kind of a, a techie, you know, kind of data perspective that they didn't that they didn't have before? Well, <laughs> they didn't have a lot. They probably didn't well, have a lot, a say, besides email <laughs> and the Being the first CIO, <laughs> I don't know that I really knew what I was walking into at the time because, um, you know, I got to Kanab, and Kanab, Utah, where the sanctuary is, is the headquarters. And Kanab is very um, infrastructure challenged. Um, there <laughs> infrastructure is, yeah, like <laughs> there is, there is one ISP in Kanab, and there is no redundancy in networks. So we really don't have, you know, you, you come from the city and you think you take these things for granted, and you find out, oh my God, you know, what am I going to do? And and Kanab is is, is you know the, the hub of our network. And so if Canab goes down, you know, the whole organization is down. So right. one of the first decisions I made was that we were going to the cloud right. because right. we had to get Canab out of that position. And that was um, <laughs> one of our <laughs> one of the first uh, major de decisions I made. And um, we chose AWS as our partner to do that. So that was very, very exciting. Um, we knew that they had the. They had uh, infrastructure we couldn't dream of providing, right, and right. you know, and we could really make our whole network more robust. Our applications would be available, and we could really do some great things. So. <laughs> and you're not worried about the one ISP <laughs> provider in Kanab yeah, if there's an yeah. accident and uh, knocks a yeah. phone pole down. Yeah, All yeah. right, but then you're talking about some new some new things that you're working on, and a new thing you t you talked about before we turn the cameras on community life saving dashboards. What is that all about? Okay, so a couple years ago, the Community Life Saving Dashboard is uh, two, um, the culmination of two years of work um, from 
all across the Best Friends organization, not just the IT department. In fact, it was the brainchild of our chief mission officer, Holly Sizemore. But it's really, in animal welfare, there's never been um, a national picture of what the problem really is regarding killing animals in shelters. So we did this big... Um, because they're all regional, right? They're all regional shelters. They're all know, very, local, very local community shelters, yes. So, and transparency isn't forced. So, uh, you know, some states force transparency. They re force them to report numbers, but a lot of at states state, don't. At the state level. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of states don't. So, you know, when you're killing animals in shelters, you really don't want people yeah, to know that, yeah, right? Because the, the American public doesn't believe in it. Um, so anyway, we worked really hard to collect all this data from across the country, and we put it all into this dashboard, and it is now a tool where anybody, um, anybody in the public, it's on our website, um, can look at it, and they can see that, you know, where we're at from an, a national level, um, they can see where they're at from a state level, they can drill down into their community, and they can drill down to an individual shelter. Wow. And the idea behind the dashboard is to really, is to get communities behind helping their shelters. Because it's, it's you know, as I said earlier, it's gonna take us all. Right. And not only best friends and our partners, but the public plays a big part of this. Right. And so when did that roll out? What Do you have any kind of feedback? How's it working? It's working wonderfully. We rolled it out at our conference um, in July. Also oh, recently, so it's our, pretty yeah, new. Initially. Yeah, it's just a few weeks old. Okay. Um, we rolled it out at our national conference and um, we were all a bit nervous about it, um, you know, especially from a technology perspective. Right, right. Um, we knew that being the first of its kind ever in animal welfare that, um, you know, it was going to get a lot of publicity both inside and outside the movement. <laughs> I and say both pro yeah, and con. Yeah, <laughs> and it's sitting on our website and, well, and really pro and con. Right, right. But it's sitting on our website and we're like, okay, how we don't know what kind of traffic we're going to get. You know, what are we going to do about this? So we spent a lot of time with Amazon prior to the launch, you know, having them look at our environment, getting advice, discussing it with them. Um, not and we knew bring down that ISP in uh, Utah. No, not, well, thank God. No, it wasn't. Thank God we were in the cloud. And um, and so Amazon really um, helped us prepare. And then the day of the launch, we knew the time of the launch. So we actually had a war room set up, a virtual war room. And uh, we had Amazon employees participating in our war room. We were we watched the traffic. Um, and, you know, we did get huge spikes in traffic um, at all times through the day when certain things were happening. And I'm happy to say from a technology perspective, it was a non-event because good. <laughs> we did not crash. We stayed up. We handled all the traffic. We scaled when we needed to. And we did it, you know, basic, virtually at the, the press of a button awesome. so, or a flick of a switch, whatever you want to say. That's what you want, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Don't want anyone exactly. to know. It's like, it's a good ref. <laughs> Nobody's talking about you. You probably did a good job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, so before I let you go, so what are some of your, you know, kind of initiatives now looking forward? You got this great partner in AWS. You have basically as much horsepower as, as, as you need to get done what you need to get done. What are some of the things that you see, you know, kind of next for wow. your roadmap? We have don't a lot. Don't give me the whole. Don't give me the whole. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm, I'm just going to hit on a few key <laughs> points. I think you know what you know. We used Amazon initially as, as as our cloud infrastructure, but. I think the biggest thing we're looking at is platform as a service. Um, there is so much capability out there with predictive analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, um, AR, VR, you name it, um, facial recognition. So we're really investigating those technologies because we think they have, um, uh, you know, there's, they could have a huge impact on our movement and really help us achieve life saving. Right, right. And I think that um, you know, we're starting, we have our fledgling data science program. We're using the Amazon um, Data Lake um, technology, Athena, um, Glue. Um, they're just, they were just telling me about Data Lake formation, which I just, just a few minutes ago emailed my, my data guy and said, start looking at Data Lake formation, right, right. you know? So, I mean, we're really, really investing in the platform as a service. 
the other the other thing I see is that we're um, animal welfare is sort of broken from a technology perspective and a data perspective. Um, in that we have no interoperability and you know we don't have the data available. So let's say you want to adopt a five-year-old animal. Well, you go to a shelter, you can't fi get five years of history on a five-year-old animal. So it's really starting to fix the foundation for the movement as a whole, mm. not just best friends. So making sure that you know the veterinary data is there, all the data from the pet ecosystem is there. So we're investigating with AWS. They're actually coming to our sanctuary in a couple of months. We're going to do a workshop to figure out how we get, how how we do this, how we really fix it, so that we have interoperability between every shelter when an animal moves from shelter to rescue or whatever, so that that their data follows them wherever right. they go. So so adopters are fully informed when adopting an animal. Because you're in a pretty interesting position because you're not with any one particular shelter. You kind of cross many, many boundaries. So you're in a good position to be that aggregator yeah. uh, of that data. Yeah, I don't know that we want to be the aggregator, but we want to lead um, the movement towards doing that. Just getting the, the technology players, the shelter management systems, the the other people who play a role in technology for animal welfare, getting them in a room and talking and figuring out this problem is huge. Right. And with a partner like Amazon, we, we feel it can be solved. Right. Well, Angie, thank you for uh, for taking a few minutes and sharing your story. Really, really enjoyed hearing it. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> All right. She's Angie, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at AWS Imagine in Seattle. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.